Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fever Talk podcast. I'm Magalie Rochette, and I'm excited because today we have someone that uh, we're talking with someone that I admire a lot. So if you've been following a little bit what we do, I mean, I've been lucky enough through my partnership with Rafa to have uh, a new, a custom made kit just for me, just for racing every year uh, since I've been working with Rafa. And this year's kit, which is coming out for sale just in a couple of days, is I think my favorite that I've had over the last three years. Um, and we'll dig more into what the kit means today because we are lucky enough to have Santi Roig Denara is with us, and Santi is the creator behind this kit. So today we're going to, I mean, we're we're just so privileged. We get to dig into the mind of a creative genius and figure out how in, how in the world did he come up with such great ideas. So Santi, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Magali. What an intro. It's a pleasure joining you. Like, obviously, all <laughs> of us have been following you in the racing, and we've met before, but being part of what happens uh, outside of racing, it's a pleasure. So I'm happy to be here today. Well, thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege for me as well. Um, Santi, uh, can we start by, do you mind, can you introduce yourself and tell us what is your role at Rafa, please? Yeah, sure thing. So I'm Santi. I'm from Barcelona. I joined Rafa a few years ago. And funny enough, the, um, the first project that I was involved in was designing your kit. That was a few years ago. Yeah. And I think, well, that would have been where we met. And this is what I do at Rafa. I'm part of the graphics team. So we're in charge of designing kit, graphics for kit, both mainline, but sometimes even more exciting what we do for teams and athletes, which okay. is not just designing or coming up with a, sometimes a quite exciting story. It's also being able to then seeing it live racing, which is really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, actually, last year you came to Namur to watch to watch the race, and it was cool because you came and you actually had feedback from seeing the race, the kit live in action during one of the muddiest race. I remember you came after and you're like, "Oh my god!" Like this gave me so many ideas that we need to adapt for the next kit. And I, like I thought that was that was really cool. I think you're, it's fun to work with someone for me like that is. I mean, such a, again, such a genius creatively, but also it's cool that, I mean, you race cross yourself, like you're passionate about this sport yourself. So that's, that. I think, I think it makes a difference, does it? Like in how you design stuff. Definitely, definitely. I think the, and, and not just from the graphics point of view, I think this is something we've been trying to do at Rafa quite a lot, which is getting whoever works in, like here at Rafa works in our headquarters in London, like closer, not just to racing, but to cycling in general. So it's really, it's really, yeah, it's a way to get insight from something that you, you just can't experience when you sat in an office. You just need to get closer to it, write more. And it was, as you were saying, it was so good coming to Namur and seeing just the, the action of an actual cyclocross race, probably one of the biggest ones in the calendar. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was great fun. Yeah. And what are, what are the things that, that you'd learn from watching a race like that, that you then apply to design? Like, are there, you know, I remember one of the things you said is like the red that we had for the national champion kit. You're like, oh, there's too many red. Like, it's really hard to pick out. So this year you came out and the, the red on the national champion kit, what, kit was like really out there and popping a lot more. So like, is that, are that like those, some of the uh, things that you, that you notice? Definitely. Definitely. It's when you get that, um, like first hand experience because some maybe that happens to you as well when you prepare a race you think about what's how it's going to work out what do you need to do but then when you are there in the moment things things change maybe it's I don't know the light changes or you see all the people wearing as you said like a similar color on their kit and what you what you want to do is not just creating a unique story that's like talks about you and is really interesting and bright and fun you also want to create something that's different and interesting and then it's easy mm -hmm. to tell apart from from the bunch so definitely yeah. all those things you can't you can't learn them when you are sat in an office yeah cool i mean i think like let's let's dig into it into this specific kit that you created and and then i'll have a bunch more questions but i think we can ask those questions relative to this kit maybe um so i don't i think from from my perspective, how the story behind this kit started was Anna McLeod, who uh, who I was working with at Rafa. She 
I mean, a few years ago, actually, I wrote a book. Like, I, I, I wrote a photo book that with photos I took and like a few articles that I wrote. I shared that and I sent one to Anna. And there was one article on this in this book that I called "Big Guy," which was how in normal life I'm. I try to be nice, you know. Like, I, I, I like making friends, and I love like, yeah, I love making friends with everyone, and I, I like being nice with people, and and. It's been a problem because I have the same attitude with my competitors. Like, I think they're cool. I, I genuinely think they're cool. So I want to be their friends. And <laughs> and I think it works. But then when I get into the racing mode, I have to flip my mindset and, like, come to suddenly not just the nice Magali, but how can I actually try and compete and win a race? So, like, I need to be aggressive and I need to be more confident in myself and not just admire others. And I called this second personality the big guy just because it's like Hulk, you know, like when mm -hmm. he's Bruce Banner, he's someone, but suddenly, like, when he has to battle, he's the big Hulk. And so it's, it's kind of a different personality. So, she read that and she wrote to me and she's like, it'd be cool to explore this for the kid. And I'm like, huh? Yeah, it could be cool. And at the same time I was really, and I'm still, I still am into like, I love colors. I told you about, like, I see a lot of things in colors and I yeah. love like yeah, one yeah. of my favorite account to follow is Pantone. Cause I just think like what they do with colors is so cool. So I think like that was the general idea. And that's when we spoke first. Is that like, what do you recall from that first conversation we had? Cause that's usually how it starts, right? To create the kit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Good that you that you mentioned this because it's. I feel like this is key, not just you know from a design perspective, even from a relationship point of view. Because getting to understand better, not not what do you like, because we obviously care about that, but more about what are you about, how do you approach racing, who are you as a person. We we always try to get that translated somehow on the kid. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe your listeners will remember last year's kid where. Um, maybe there wasn't anything from that book, but we, we pulled some notes from your notebooks, like the, the notes that you take before and after racing. So yep. we started incorporating that on the previous kit, which I thought it was, it was really cool because it was actually your handwriting on the kit. Yeah. So that was a quite unique um, touch that we added. And probably we went a step further this year and delved quite deeper in your story and how you approach a race. And it's, it's what you started saying, the big guy, that was the big story. That was the big, mm -hmm. the big concept. And then, yeah, just trying to translate that graphically was quite a, quite a fun process to go through, really. Yeah. And actually, I'm really curious about that process because, you know, like you tell me, we talk about the big guy, like for me, who's maybe not as creative, like the first thing that comes to mind is like, oh, it's going to be a green kit with some purple, you know, like Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> but then... But then, like, we chatted further, and I, I shared with you uh, that, yeah, for me, I've always seen, like, songs have colors and numbers have colors. And I I don't know. I kind of see life in colors, I, I guess. And so each emotion had a color. Once we had this, have this talk and it's time to create a design out of, out of it, what is your process? Like, let's say we finish this call, then you're at, at your house, and, like, you have, you have to work on this. How... What are your steps? Like, do you start drawing or is it like, do you start researching like on, in other fields like fashion or like what, how, how does it come to life really in your head? Well, I remember precisely that call, the, the first call we had about the previous, well, or this year's design and Anna was on the call and you started telling us about how you saw colors in different emotions or how could you visualize concepts, like quite abstract concepts for normal people like me. Um, and she, she just spotted that that was called synesthesia and it's something I didn't know it existed or what, what, it, what was it really? So the mm -hmm. first thing I did, for example, was just doing a bit of research and understanding more how that worked. And then I remember asking a few more questions to you about what was that process exactly so that we could get an idea about which were your mental states or which were the emotions that you felt you had to go through to go there. Um, so once we had that, which maybe we would call like a concept map, you know, a few ideas, a few um, words that sound good, and maybe we can put together into a sentence. That's what we're trying to explore. How can we translate that visually or graphically? So you also got it right again. We would go and look at different references from either fashion, sometimes art, and start getting a, a clearer idea about what do we think it will look good and not just look good, but what would reflect that concept better. Mm -hmm. So it's a process of, 
exploring testing, exploring testing, seeing what works, what doesn't work, edi editing colors. And when we feel we are in a happy place, let's say, or that we're happy to share that proposal to you, that's when we kick off the, the secondary conversations because it's always like really, really great designing and having, you know, getting something that's fun or that we're happy with, but it only works if you are happy with it as well. So the secondary, the second level of conversation, I feel like they are key, not just mm -hmm. for the key to be, for the kid to be successful, but also like to work for you. Because I think this was the, the main story, right? Like helping you to, tr to transition from happy, super friendly Magali, which is what you are all the time, to that like more focused racing mode or the big guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's cool. And then like specifically, you say sometimes you get inspired by fashion. Like I'm, I'm curious about that. Like, do you, do you even look at what's like? I guess what I'm asking it. Well, two things. So first, like, do you even look at what's done, what else is done in the cycling industry to make sure like you stay away from it, or to make sure like you're. I mean, I feel like Rafa has always been the trendsetter and never the the follower. So like to be in that position, is it that you look at other industry, like, yeah, again, fashion or per perhaps art or like whatever, like how does, how does that play a part in creating, creating the kit? And also like, what are the constraints that you have to work with? I, I guess there are two separate questions. So we can start with like where you get the ideas first, but, uh, and then, and then I'll ask the, the second one. Sure. Sounds good. Let's go step by step. So first mm -hmm. one is definitely, we, we try and look at as, as many things as possible not just um, at what's been done in the peloton, but also what have we done in the most recent years? Because you, you got that right. Like there's, there's, or, or there's this reputation that Rafa has built over the years with being disruptive and being different and coming up with sometimes more successful, sometimes least successful, but always like quite memorable kid designs. Mm -hmm. And this is a reputation we like, we try to live up to and not just being happy and comfortable with it, but also challenging um, what are our ways of working and always trying to do better or different if, if, if so. Mm -hmm. So that, that will be the first half of the answer. And the second one will be, if you, if you only looked at cycling kit designs, uh, I feel like it would be like quite, not just boring, but very restrictive because you, mm -hmm. you would just be looking at a very, very specific, somebody was mentioning in the office the other day, a bubble within a bubble within a bubble, because mm -hmm. it's very like specific. But yep. if you rather look at, you have a, a broader perspective on whether it's sports or even broader fashion, or you look at streetwear, like things that are happening in like at the moment, I feel like this is so much richer. It's just way more inspiring because you could look mm -hmm. at, I don't know, whatever happens on the corner when you're going to get lunch and just see something and think, oh, this is interesting. Maybe it's not, you know, the, the one that maybe that opens um, just an avenue to explore the different concepts or different ways to explore a graphic. Yeah. You know what I think is really cool about what you just said is that be looking around and being aware is such an important key of creating what you do. And it, and it, and it is one of the emotions that is, that is represented on a kid because I think like as a racer, for example, awareness is so key. Like if I'm racing and I'm only focused on myself, well, it's not a time trial. So I might be missing like the race move. I might be missing an attack that I need to follow. I might be missing that everyone else in front of me, like some people are trying a different line and it's different than the one I had that I had planned to ride, but it's faster. So like awareness is so key and it's cool to see that it's the same thing in, in design or in art. Like you have to, yeah, focus on like what you're doing and remember the direction that you want to go, but still always keep being aware of what's going on so you can like catch on things or like get inspired and then create your own path. I think that's cool. It's like mm -hmm. a very, very similar way of, of doing things. Yeah. It's interesting that both, um, uh, yeah, both approaches like, um, live parallel. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a way of, a way of being somehow, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I mean, I think like, I was thinking about that earlier, like all the emotions that are on the kit. Yes. For me, they're like the racing mindset. But when you think about it, there's, there are probably emotions that are necessary for any kind of performance, like anything that you want to do in life, like those emotions that are on the kit. And we can, after that, we can like, I have it here so we can like show mm -hmm. the colors and, but there's, there was uh focus awareness, which we covered, uh, 
there's calm and excitement, which I think go hand in hand. Like you need to be calm to process what's going on, but you need to have that certain level of adrenaline and excitement to perform at your best. Uh, you need to be confidence, confident, which was another one of the, of the emotions. And you need to be happy with all, because I think if you're not happy, it's really hard to bring the best out of yourself. But yes, those are very specific to my personal racing mindset. But I think, I don't know, do you agree that they kind of all work for any kind of performance endeavor? Definitely. Absolutely. I think what, what was interesting when we started having those um, conversations about the new kid was how you were defining them. And you were almost like creating a like this sort of process because you would go, you would need to be like this to then become that and then that make you happy. And I thought that was, you know, almost like a formula, not just to get to the big guy, but almost, but almost like to, to enjoy um, what's happening in your surroundings. So yeah, it could, it could, it could be a process that anybody could adapt and feel like they perform or they enjoy more what they are doing. Cause it, ultimately what you want is just to feel more present and that, mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like this is, um, what really makes everybody happy in the end, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The, the word presence, I mean, I, I couldn't, it couldn't be more like more precise. That's exactly what it is. And I, I went through all these colors and emotions to get there, but the actual, the, the result in the end is to be present. And then once you're present, you're able to make like the good decision and ultimately perform at your best. So very well said. And if we go back to the actual kit, so like now we're at the step that you've started thinking about that, about that process. You have these colors, you have like this story that we're trying to tell. Um, and then what's next? Like, did you, you sit at the computer and, and you, and you, you like try a bunch of different combination. I, I mean, you, 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 you talked about that. Then we're at the time that we, we talk again, like to, to get to the next step. But you know, one of the things that I'm always mind blown about is when you show that presentation deck to me like when you're when we're actually at that second call and you show me like what creative process you went through to get to that first result and then we, we chat to that and i mean like can we do you mind showing us like can we see like what like that yes. presentation and 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 maybe like i i remember after that like another thing that brought the kit to life is when you added shapes to it and that's a whole other story that maybe you, you want to would you want to tell us uh, as Definitely. we look at the deck maybe yeah i think i think it'd be great to see it and probably it'd be nice it'd be nice for people to being able to follow that process because i think for that one we were like quite like linear very similar to how you approach um getting ready for before a race so maybe mm -hmm. it's, yeah it's quite interesting for people to see how we did cool. it but but before that maggie i feel like I would it would not be fair because you did ask about like constraints or limitations when we were designing. Yes, true. Yeah. And I feel like there's something I need to say because, you know. Thanks for bringing from, that back because that's, I, I really want to know that. Thanks you. Yeah, no, that's okay. I think it's interesting because sometimes you think, oh, you know, design, creative, it's fun. You can do whatever you want, but that's, that's not right. Like there's production limitations and sometimes what you have in mind just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And here's where our amazing team of, developers come in. So we've got um, a few people here, like Lydia, Ruby, Elaine, that are the ones who we always not argue, but we have these really interesting conversations where design would always push to do what they want and trying to make it as, you know, as flashy, as interesting, as different as possible. And they would have the knowledge to make sure that that works and that it looks good on kids. Mm -hmm. So I think our, does our design work would not be like meaningful or wouldn't really work without them. So I just need to say like shout out to them because it's it's like within as you know as you know it's always like teamwork that makes the dream work. Yeah. And this is this is surely what happens at Rafa. So yeah. Happy. No, thanks for sharing it. If we go into the specifics of that, like, is it? I mean, we talked all already about like wanting to be different from the peloton and from you know, the colors that you want them to be different from other teams. So that's already one constraint, but also like when you talk more about product production and looking good on the kit versus looking good on the computer, does it happen sometimes like a design that looks good on paper would not necessarily look good in movement or in real life? Or is that something that you need to, to take in, in account? Like, is that what you mean when you say like working with the production team and how different it is from like paper to like actual kit design? Yeah, I mean, de definitely having a thing on how it looks from 
because when we design it or when we start applying that design, we put it on a, like a technical drawing. So mm-hmm. you see it flat, you drop the graphic in, it works beautiful, easy. But then you, you need to, you need to consider that what you're designing, it's not like flat paper. Like it will mm-hmm. be a flat pattern first, but when it gets sewn, it's a 3D object. You, you, mm-hmm. you've got a body, so that will go around you. So that, um, translating that graphic into a garment that will be around you. The, you know, there's, there's limitations on the product because if you, you wear different jerseys, like a cross suit, a narrow suit, the different ones would have different patterns. So you need to make sure that that graphic works in any of them. Mm-hmm. So that's when, or one of the things, because they do many things, but it's one of the things that development are really, really helpful because they've got a better understanding that we do uh, with product. And it's always with those conversations that we get to the best result. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what I meant with the key uh, assistance all the time. Yeah, no, I think I think it's cool. Uh, it's cool to understand. And do you feel like sometimes those constraints actually bring you to your best work because you can't like you you know since you have those limitations, you have to like be more creative with what you can and what you have to do. Do you think like it brings your best work, or do you think that sometimes actually like oh you wish you could have done something else? Well. You always want to do something else or something better without nobody telling you that you can't do something. But it's when you get yeah. those small little hurdles or difficulties that you need to push yourself more. And I guess that, again, is parallel to racing. When you've Absolutely. been through an illness, you've, you've got injured, you just need to pull yourself together and push harder. And I think yeah. this is quite interesting and makes the process even more exciting. Maybe not easy, but definitely more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, it is interesting. Like that's something that we don't, we don't think about as, I mean, when, when you're not a designer and you just wear the kit, you're like, oh, whatever. Like it's, it's, it's the same as if it was a painting, you know, like it could still work Mm -hmm. on, but, but it's not. So it's interesting to learn, to learn how it works. Um, so yeah, I mean, then like if we go to the next step, because now like we have the colors, but what was, I think probably what, was the biggest surprise to me when you presented the kit to me was how you, I mean, the shapes that you brought into the design. Um, can you talk to us about that? And maybe if you want to show us, you can, you can show us, I don't know which way you want to, you want to bring us in, into that process. Yeah. I think, I think that was a good moment to share the deck as you mentioned. So I'll try and, I'll try. Yeah. I think that's the one. Let me know if that's working. Mm. Can you see the deck? It's coming. I, it's just loading, but I okay. feel like it's. I see that it's coming. Okay. Let me know when you can see it, and maybe I okay. can. I can keep on talking over it. Uh, is now I see black. Is it black? The first page? Mm, no, it should not be black. No. Okay. Maybe if I change this, can you see it now? Yes, I see it. Perfect. Okay. Okay. I guess it doesn't work if I go full screen. Um, cool. So this is. This is for whoever is watching us now. This is the deck that we used to present to Magali, the concept for his current kit. And same as we spoke earlier, what, what, um, the way we always start is by looking back at what we had done. So this is a 2021 kit. This was 2022. And we... How much, how much does those kids, uh, how do you take, how much do you take them into consideration into creating the new one, Santi? I think I think quite quite a lot actually because you, you can see now that it feels like 22 was an evolution of the kids you had mm-hmm. for 21 and sometimes this is uh, sometimes we do sometimes we don't but sometimes we try and if there's something that we really really like rather than changing it and starting over again for the for the following year what we try is keep some sort of continuity so the graphic mm-hmm. language the colors because maybe the story was interesting enough and we really really like it and we want we want to make that a bigger thing sometimes we we try and almost like just evolve the graphic yeah. or and keep the story so this is why there's common elements from between the two and for the for the following one so for the 2023 one what we thought maybe it's a, it's a great moment to bring something like fresh something new talking about the story that we spoke about um yeah. just earlier so he, we looked at them and said like right okay this was working maybe we now want to make something a bit more different a bit more fresh so we we look at them and say okay we will try to stay away from anything that looks like that so okay. that's how we start yeah um so then we say yeah what does 2023 look like 
And as you were saying, the Formula 2 needs the big guy. That was, that was the main story. That was the main concept. And this is where we started like unpicking uh, what, what could be, how could that be visualized? We talked about how you, um, how, what, what that big guy means to you. It's enthusiastic, full of energy, colorful. It's the perfect, perfect racing mindset. And it's a mindset, uh, it's a balance of other, of other emotions. <laughs> so this is where the big word comes in that Anna <laughs> brought up. Yep. <laughs> this is how we started. Um, I think this came through an email. Like I asked you, right, Maggie, so these are the emotions. This is really great. This is super exciting. What would be the colors that you can sort of identify with these emotions? So that was like a starting palette. This, yep. You could say that these were the initial ingredients to come up with the, with the final, uh, for the final kit. <laughs> and maybe these are some of the learnings from when I came to Namur to watch you, because we thought, yep. okay, there's a lot of, there's a lot of red. But maybe we want like higher intensity, high frequency, and high visibility. These yep. concepts work both for when you race, because it's high intensity and high frequency and also high visibility. True. So we wanted to translate that into the kit as well. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Because that's a lot of words. So this would be a mood board that we put together with some visual references. Some come from art and other ones maybe more from just straight design or more con con contemporary culture. But these more than something that we would put on the kit. It just helps us like looking laterally and imagining how could we translate those big ideas into a graphic. I hope that wow. makes sense. If you've got it makes sense. Oh no, I think this is great. I mean, I'm just like enthralled by, by what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, I know you've seen it before, but if I'm, if I'm not clear enough, just give me a shout and I'll, I know, this I'll is great. more specific. It's cool so, so, to me to so, see how, how you translate words. You know, you just said like from high visibility, visibility, high intensity, how you translate words into images, you know, like and, and feeling into images. It's like that to me is, is something that that's cool. Like that's, I think, part of the creative genius. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if genius, but it's definitely part of uh, experimentation and trial and error. You see now a quite like refined selection. But there was pages and pages and pages of, of imagery okay. that we were thinking, maybe we can push it that way, maybe we can go that other way. And it's, it's for us to boil it down to something that we feel it makes sense, is coherent, and then we can yeah. uh, present to you. <laughs> so I think this is probably the second key moment of the creative process, or at least for this, for, for the current kid. Because mm -hmm. last, like the, the previous season, you, you got like podium on... Both of these tracks, Besançon and Val mm -hmm. I think you got second yep. in Val di Sole? Uh, second in, in Besançon and third in, ba in Val di Sole. Okay, the other way around. But yeah, yep. um, so really, really great results. And it was obviously great to see you like doing so well. And we thought maybe maybe those are moments that we can help Magali remembering and reminding how was the racing mentality. So it was not so much about the result. I remember you saying I was really happy today. I raced so good. I felt so great. So we we used some of some parts of the track. You can see the tracks here. Yeah. And we slice them down. Man, this is cool. And and you know initial like initial pattern. Yeah, go on. When you told me that, I think like it's so for me like that's where the magic comes to life, you know, like that's where the kit came to life with, with that addition that you made and in, incorporating those tracks, because I mean, the truth is like, that's kind of how you build confidence. At least I like building on past experiences where things went well, you think about that and you put yourself into that mindset or in that moment where you, you did well. And that's suddenly you're like, Oh, and it, it feels like I did it. And I'm able to do that, to do this because I've, I have done it. It's not like just, it's not like just dreams. It's facts that have happened. And then, and that's why I think it's so magic because it does like every time I look at the kid, I do think about that now. And it does bring me back into those, those good feelings, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good to remember that, that moment. I think you were mentioning it on, on another of your podcast a few weeks ago, how before a race, you just try to remember that state of flow in every corner. So this mm -hmm. is why this every corner matters um, idea, because it definitely came from you. Like every single pool, uh, like piece of text that's on this presentation is something that got uh, mentioned in our previous conversations, which is quite cool to do because, because you obviously can recognize yourself in whatever we are presenting to you. Mm -hmm. Again, this is 
one of the, my favorite ones because you, you it's like very subtle touched on this earlier and then yeah. you need to be focused on yourself to be aware of your surroundings. So mm -hmm. this is, this is being focused on every corner or at least that's how we saw it and how we translate this is more or less, uh, visualize, visualizing an introspective, unexpansive graphic. So this would be one of the shapes that we were looking at earlier and just roughly apply the colors that we, we saw on the initial palette. So we start to see a graphic now. Now it's, it's not just words, it's not just a track, there's something else going on. So this is where the experiment, experimentation starts coming into play. And, and it still seeing... brings the high intensity, high visibility energy that you were, that you also had. So it like brings everything together. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Um, so yeah, more of, more of the pattern, um, starting, starting to see how these, how those elements work with each other, testing like slight uh, changes on, on the colors. So something we like to do, because even though your palette was quite defined, we need to make sure that they work. But ultimately, and this is a, like a very basic graphic, what we want to do is making like happy and joyful Magali becoming that uh, big guy. This, mm -hmm. this was what that little graphic in the middle or the chart about the little graphic in the middle um, was, was, yeah, that's what we wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. And now we can see the final design. This is one of the 2D technical drawings that I was telling you about. So yep. sometimes when you put it in one of those drawings, everything works perfectly. And it's when, it's when PE uh, come into play and they really help us making it real. And that yeah. actually gets to you. Yeah. I mean, thank to you for showing. Fair. Oh yeah. That's the real that's life. Right. Yeah. I mean, it real life. I'm biased, but it came out good, didn't it? I think it, it came out good. <laughs> I'm I'm very happy with it. I, I've got to say, like with the with the history that we've got designing kids together, because I feel like you are a key part of the design. It's not just us here doing something for you. Like I think I think we, we're getting quite good at it, don't we? Mm -hmm. I I agree. I mean, I feel so lucky every time, and like now I get to. I mean, I have it in my hands here, and it's like the the cool thing that I find is that you guys always insert little Easter egg too. Like the the color here is has the track patterns again so it's not just in the shapes of it's not just like the shapes that are reminding me of the tracks but also like there's an actual reminder here and there's still the little nudge to the previous kits which is still the the queen bee is still there so it's it's just mm -hmm. like i don't know every time i receive it like I, I get to see it in 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 the presentation you send but then once i receive it it's like oh my god like it actually looks even better in in person so yeah, thank you for sharing all of that. I, I really appreciate oh, it. I think it's fun to share it with, with people as well. Um, okay. I mean, if we, if we finish on, on that note, well, first, is there anything you would like to, uh, to uh, other thing you would like to add about, about this, about all, our conversation or about the kit or. I guess, I guess I've said it already, but it's something I would like to insist on because, um, I feel like design, it, it can, it can sometimes be quite disconnected between the brief that you get and the outcome and at the end of the process. And it, one of the things I, I do love and I enjoy the most from my job is being able to be in touch, like in close, in close contact with, with athletes or with people that are actually going to be using that kit. And I guess we've just run through the process now, but it just, it, it sort of tells you how by knowing exactly what are you, what are you working with or who are you working for, it normally gets you closer to a quite successful result. So this mm -hmm. is, this is just fun because it's obviously incredible that, you know, having, having access to you and getting to know you better, but then just the process of designing the kit is just makes it like both more exciting in during the process and more pro hopefully more successful at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, uh, but, well, Thanks for saying that. And I want to say that it's very mutual because for me as well, like wearing, I've been on previous teams before and sometimes it was just like, Hey, here's the kit, wear it. And it's okay, but you don't have the same, maybe it looks good and you're happy to wear it, but it kind of ends that there's no kind of emotional connection to it. But then when I get to work with you like personally and know you and chat to you on the phone and then we go ride together and then we go like I see you at the races and I get to understand your process and I know the story of the kid because it's very personal to me I think it makes it I'm, I'm it makes me so so proud every time I get to wear it you know and every time someone 
comes to me and say like, oh, wow, your kid is cool. Like, I'm probably annoying them because I'm like, oh, yeah, well, let me tell you all about it. It's Santi who made it. And like, <laughs> I get so excited. But I think I think it, it, it makes it in the end a better product. And for me, like it actually does the it does motivate me to 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 be even like to to work even harder because I know like all the people that I've, I've worked on it. So, yeah, it's it's very special. That's fantastic, Max. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, well, let's finish on this because I, I ask this to everyone who comes on the podcast. It's a fever talk. I think you know what the fever is. It's like that boiling feeling inside of you that just makes you... I sometimes say that mine is like... I have many things that give me fever, but one of them is like when there's... At Namor, for example, there is one descent that has, you go, it's really steep and you go really fast, but there's one rut at the bottom. And if you, if you hit that rut perfectly, it's just like, phwoom, you feel like your bike just like gripping and, and then you feel like you're keeping the speed and it's such a good feeling that gives me fever. Um, so I'm asking you, Santi, what gives you fever? Well, you, you did mention that at, at the beginning because I only very recently started racing cross. I mean, obviously, it's, it, it sounds funny saying that to you because it's just uh, like a local London like thing that's not very serious or very formal. But um, just being able to race a few weeks back, that, was, that meant quite a lot to me because I've been thinking about racing for months. But first, first my bike got stolen, then I got injured. And it's, it feels like I've been waiting for longer than a year to race. Mm -hmm. So when I finished that first race, obviously I had been watching like cross for a few years by then. And I was like, oh, I really want to do it. And seeing friends from the office racing cross and not being able to do it was like, oh, this, I'm pretty sure it's great, but I'm not sure when I'm going to be <laughs> able to do it. When yeah. I finished my first race, I was just so excited. I could understand. The first thing that came to my mind was I need to, I need to send a text to Magali and tell her, I understand. I know fever. This is fever. Yes. This is definitely uh, fever. So that was that was a really awesome. beautiful moment, to be honest. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's thank you for sharing that. I think that's awesome, and I, hopefully, I get to join one of those local local London race. I would love to go see what that scene is all about. I love the the time that I this little time I spent in London last year. Um, yeah. So I would love to come and be part of one of those races. The the culture around cyclocross in England looks actually really special. So I'd be I'd be excited to be to to, to kind of be a little part of it at some point. Oh, it, it it really is special. It really is special. Like I've only been part of it for for you know a very short period of time, but it's so it's so nice and friendly that it just gathers people together. So it, I'm pretty sure it would be a pleasure to have you there next time you you're in London. Cool. And then we can make the fever, sh spread the fever as much as we can. Um, You've got thank yourself you. a deal. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Santi. Thanks for your generosity in, in sharing uh, the inside of your creative process and what goes on in your mind. It's a real privilege. And I want to, yeah, thank you. I, I, as I said, I feel so lucky to be able to wear that kit. And people, if you like this story and if you feel like it connects to how you prepare to perform, um, the kit is available, uh, will be available for sale on rafa.cc. And I think like the one last thing I will mention is like, and I, I actually love this about the kit that the shapes are kind of abstract and you know, it's not precise proportion of each color. And I like that because I think it's for me and my racing mindset, those are changing. You know, sometimes I need a bit more confidence. Sometimes I, fe I need to be a bit more calm because I'm too excited. And sometimes I need to be more excited because I'm too calm. And it, they're always, the ratio of each emotion is always changing. And I think that's one thing that that's cool is that, yes, like, yes, you have like these ingredients that you need and that I personally, but there's no secret recipe. So you still have to work on like finding the ratio on each day. Um, and so maybe the ratio is different from your, like if, if someone is listening to that and that like their personal pursuit is a little bit different than just racing cyclocross world cups, those emotions are still there, but you can, you can tweak them and, and use them to fit your needs better. So I, I, I think that's cool. So yeah, thank you everyone for listening and, uh, thank you again, Santi and see you guys next time. Thanks for having me, Marley. It's been a pleasure. Cool. All right. I will stop the record.